In supply chains, a sizable portion of supply chain terminology is simply inadequate. Confusing terminology hurts newcomers and seasoned practitioners alike. Good terminology should be as neutral and factual as possible, but this is not often the case. So let's fix it with some of the most common ones, and here are some of our suggestions. The ABC analysis should have been named as moving average segmentation. Terminology-wise, the term ABC brings absolutely nothing to the table, while analysis is as vague as it gets. The expression moving average segmentation is more specific. It clarifies the inherent flaws associated with this method. Indeed, moving averages not only create instability over time, but also fail at reflecting key patterns, such as cyclicities. Number two, service level should have been named service rate, which would have been more consistent with the fill rate. The term level hints at a quantity, as in stock level. However, the service level is a percentage. It's probably one of the smaller offenders in this list, but it would still be nice to be able to convey the duality, service rate versus fill rate in a more direct manner. Number three, safety stock should have been named the Gaussian buffer. Indeed, there is, well, nothing safe about this method. It relies on having both the future demand and future lead time distributed against normal distributions, i.e. the Gaussians, which is never the case as distributions of interest are not normally distributed in the realm of supply chain. The term buffer clarifies the intent associated with the stock without implying any specific virtue for this arrangement. Number four, seasonality is, well, a good term, I'll be honest, but usually the term cyclicities would be more appropriate for a supply chain perspective. Indeed, it makes little sense to restrict the demand pattern analysis to the yearly cyclicity, i.e. the actual seasonality. Day of the week and day of the month are other obvious cyclicities that invariably need to be taken into account. Thus, a supply chain director rarely seeks a seasonality analysis, but rather a cyclicity analysis. Number five, the EOQ should have been named the flat bulk order. Indeed, behind this term, which seems to capture a broad intent, lies a very simplistic formula that assumes that the future demand is constant with no seasonality, therefore, and that the future lead time is constant, i.e. no variability, and that the ordering cost is constant, so no price breaks, and also, finally, that the carrying cost is also constant, so no expiration on any of the products. The expression flat bulk order properly conveys the actual simplistic nature of this formula. Number six, the BI, business intelligence, should be named cube reporting. First, this piece of technology has nothing to do with intelligence, so that term does not belong here. Second, there is nothing inherently business-specific to this piece of tech. For example, displaying past daily temperatures per zip code is a fine use case for a cube report. Cube reporting is a user interface overlaid on top of a cube data store. The cube offers slice and dice operations. And finally, the ERP that we've heard so many times, the Enterprise Resource Planning, should have been named ERM instead, standing for Enterprise Resource Management. Their primary goal is, as the ERM name suggests, to track the assets of the enterprise. Those products have little or nothing to do with planning. The core design of ERM, which heavily relies on a relational database, is at odds with the predictive capabilities. The ERP terminology was pushed by market analysts in the 1990s to promote a series of software vendors that were trying to differentiate themselves from the competitors. As you can tell, the supply chain industry has a taste for misleading nomenclature. Do you agree with these proposed changes? Let us know in the comments.